Hi, I'm Diego González Morin from Nokia Bell Labs, and I'm going to introduce you today to the topic of egocentric human semantic cementation of loading for mixed reality and how we, we can improve the immersiveness and experience in mixed reality applications if we move some of the most demanding tasks from the device to, to, to the edge. But let's first define what mixed reality is. We can define mixed reality as this set of technologies which merge the real and virtual worlds to produce new environments and visualizations where physical and digital objects coexist and interact. But within mixed reality, we, we can find different modalities. Of course, first we have the reality, the, the normal reality in which we all live. Uh, if we start adding some uh, virtual content of the top of the reality, uh, then we talk about augmented reality. Uh, on the other contrary, if the, if the world that surrounds us is completely virtual and only some, uh, some uh, objects, real objects, are incorporated into the virtual world, such as the hands or like other important uh, objects, uh, then we, we are talking about augmented virtuality. And last uh, is the total virtual environment in which the user is completely immersed in a, in a fully virtual uh, uh, environment. We also need to define uh, what is egocentric human segmentation. So what we want to achieve when we apply egocentric human segmentation algorithms is to try to identify which pixels from, from an egocentric image correspond to any of the user's parts. So in an egocentric image uh, is the, the kind of picture that was taken from the user's point of view. Uh, and what we try to segment is, is the own user's uh, uh, body parts. Uh, however, it's a, very, it's a very tricky task as it's a pixel-wise classification and this requires very intensive computing resources. And the other problem is that it's quite hard to achieve high level of, of accuracy. And it's quite uh, normal that uh, the segmentation is full of false, false positives, for instance. But let's understand why is egocentric human segmentation that important for mixed reality technologies. In the case of virtual reality, in which the user is fully immersive in the, into the experience, uh, it can allow the user to, to see his or her own hands within the scene. Uh, so this way we can substitute this less realistic uh, representation of the user hands that uh, nowadays is, is, is done using some like avatars, avatar-like hands. Um, the, by this way, we can increase the sense of presence uh, as now the user is not represented by an avatar, but represented by his own uh, body. Um, and also, of course, by, by doing this, we can improve the overall experience and the sense of, of, of embodiment. And in the case of augmented reality, it allows to handle the problem of real-time egocentric occlusion. Um, it, this happens when we have a virtual object uh, which is placed somewhere in the real scene and if we place some of our body parts like the hand in front of it uh, it will still appear as if, as if it's as if, if it is in front of the of the of the user hand and this will completely ruin, ruin, ruin the, the experience as the user will not perceive properly where, where the object is actually uh, placed um, so in augmented reality, the, uh, the ability of, of performing this real-time egocentric uh, human segmentation is, is quite important uh, in order to achieve this fully immersive uh, experience. So what are the different approaches in the state of the art for, for um, egocentric human segmentation? So the most naive one is the color-based one um, in which the the object or the body parts that we want to segment are determined by, by some color threshold that can be more or less complicated. The positive point about this approach is that it can perform in, in more than real time. Uh, however, uh, the segmentation can be very poor as, as it, it is only related with the skin color. Uh, due to this, the, the background the environment need to be constrained so that we make sure that uh, no 
ob object in the background contain the same color that we want to, to segment. Um, and finally, the fact that we can only segment, for instance, the skin color uh, really constrains the, the, the sense of, of embodiment and, and presence. The second option is the depth-based option, um, in which the, um, the depth is used to, to threshold which pixels are going to be in front of the, of the uh, are going to be segmented and, and placed in, in the scene, and which ones are going to be uh, occluded. Uh, it's also a very fast procedure and can achieve also more than real-time uh, performance. However, the main problem is that the depth sensors are not very accurate and it, it's full of noise and artifacts that can really ruin the, the segmentation. And also the, the other problem is quite similar to the color-based one. We, could, we don't have full, full control of which objects are gonna be segmented and uh, which, one, which ones are gonna, are gonna, are gonna be occluded. Um, and finally, the, um, we have a, a, a very novel approach, which is uh, deep learning based. Uh, which ha has several advantages, like, for instance, it's not limited to one color, uh, but it can learn to learn. It can learn to, to segment different colors and clothes and shapes and whatever we, we need to segment. So by doing this, we have better control of what we can segment and achieve much higher uh, accuracy on the estimations. However, it has also some drawbacks, like, the fact that it's very computationally intensive and is that makes this algorithm to 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 be quite hard to use in real time applications and the other drawback is that it requires uh, a large data set to 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 train which really complicates the the training uh, procedure Now I'm going to introduce you to our approach uh, in which we decided to use a, a convolutional network uh, machine learning model as we decided that it was the, the most suitable approach for, for our goal. Uh, so what we did was to take the ThunderNet semantic segmentation network, which was designed to work in real time. Uh, we modify it uh, to try to improve the overall performance of, of such network and especially for, for our, our egocentric human segmentation task. Uh, so after our different modifications, um, we managed to, to still make it work in, uh, in real time while improving the overall um, performance, as we can see here in the, in the table. Uh, in, the, in the picture below, we can, we can see the, the su summary of the, of the structure and the architecture of the network. Uh, that we we designed and we proposed. As as I said, um, we achieve real time performance. So we use Keras with TensorFlow as the backend and Ubuntu as the operating system. And as as the resolution, we we decided to use 720 by 720, as uh, the square resolution is quite typical for. Uh, VR systems, and we we tried our network into different machines. One with a very powerful powerful GPU, the 1080 uh, Ti, with 12 gigabytes of, of GPU uh, dedicated memory, and we managed an inference time of below 15 milliseconds, uh, which allowed us to to run the algorithm at 60 hertz. Uh, even if we use a, a, a much less powerful machine. Uh, as the one in the right, uh, we can still um, manage to get inferences time of less than 32 milliseconds, which correspond to around 30 hertz of, of update rate. So um, even though we achieve the real-time performance, as I said in the previous slide, um, the main problem here is that VR and ER devices usually are um, have very limited computational resources. Uh, and as I said before, the machine learning based algorithms are very demanding uh, in terms of computational resources. So we have VR, very uh, constrained VR and AR devices, which need to run a 60 years or more. So we, and we need to run real time algorithms uh, at, uh, that comply to this 16 milliseconds deadline. 
So there are two types of devices. We are devices, the tether devices, uh, which are connected to very resourceful, resourceful machines, but they are connected using a, a physical wire. So even though they have higher memory and computational resources, the wire connection considerably limits the overall user experience. And on the other hand, we have some tethered devices in which, okay, the user has much better mobility and much improved user experience, but the device have very limited computational resources available in the device. And there are some other problems like um, device overheating and very high battery consumption. So the goal here is to provide untethered devices with high-end computational resources by wirelessly uploading the heavy processes from the device. And this is what we want to achieve here with, for the, with the egocentric human segmentation uh, problem. So this slide represents the idea that we have for immersive media task of loading which we have a device that is continu continuously sending sensor data to, to the base station um, or whatever, whatever other wireless receiver we, there, are, there is available um, that can be connected to the internet and to a cloud server to do some uh, non-real-time uh, uh, procedures. And then it, can also, it, it will be also connected to, to an edge server in which the real-time and heavy-duty algorithms will run. Once the data is processed, it's sent back to, to the device, which, we, which is in charge of, of rendering the, the process frame. And this is the, the pipeline that we, we have in mind uh, and what we want to achieve when we talk about task, uh, task of loading. So now we want to focus on the on the uploading of the, of the egocentric human sem semantic segmentation uh, machine learning model. Um, so this would be the reduced or simplified pipeline and more focus on the sensors that we need and the, the data that is sent back. So from the, the, the device is sending the RGB sensor data to the, to the receiver, which sends this sensor data to, to the edge server that processes it and processes, processes, processes it and uh, uh, obtains uh, the mask that will be used for, for segmenting the, the object of interest, which is in this case is the, is the user's hand or, or body part. So um, I'm gonna introduce now to, the, to our experimental setup. The goal for the initial experiments is to test the suitability of the proposed machine learning model to be used in, a, in an uploading architecture. Uh, the tool set that we, we used is quite simple. Uh, we are using TCP protocol for the simple reason that we don't want to lose any frame. Um, then what we are doing is JPEG compression uh, to reduce the overhead in the, in the transmission. Uh, and this J JPEG, uh, com JPEG compressed image is sent with some, some metadata. Um, uh, currently we are using Wi-Fi as our wireless uh, connection. And we are not using any backhaul connection. The server is directly connected in the, to the same network. So we don't need any backhaul connection for, for our experiments. The machine learning is running in Python uh, with Keras and, and TensorFlow as backend, as I said before. And the server is running in a, in a machine which, is, uh, which includes a, a 1080 uh, Ti uh, GPU. We are using the device that we can see here in the, in the right bottom part of the image which is the Oculus Rift, which uses the set mini stereo camera, uh, which is capturing the frames that we are processing. So uh, I'm gonna introduce now the two main blocks uh, which build this, this architecture that I am presenting. First, I'm gonna introduce you the, the client part. Uh, the client part is using Unity as the, as the main game engine. Um, uh, using uh, C-Sharp as the main coding uh, language. So the pipeline would be uh, as follows. So Unity is in charge of capturing the RGB frames from the, from the device uh, and then send it to a C++ pa plugin that we, we wrote uh, where the image is, is JPEG compressed, is packed in the message and sent to, to the server. Uh, this C++ plugin is also in charge of receiving the, the mask that was, re that's what, what was computed in the server. 
unpacked such message and uh, then a JPEG and compress it. Afterwards, this mask is processed in Unity and the final frame is um, is displayed in the in the in the device. On the server side, uh, we have a similar uh, similar procedure, but in this case, everything is written in, in Python, as Keras is, is is working in Python and the machine learning uh, currently is running in Python. Uh, we thought it was just simpler to to write uh, the entire uh, server in, in Python. Um, so the the pipeline is similar. We just received the TCP message uh, from from the client. We unpack the message, we uncompress the JPEG, and then we process it in the in the in the machine learning uh, model. And finally, when we obtain the mask, we JPEG compress it, we pack it in a message, and then we send it back to the to the client. Um, just some other um, experimental uh, or um, configuration parameters. So the capture image has a resolution of 2560 by 720, uh, capturing RGB format, uh, raw RGB format. Um, as we don't need very high resolution for, for the model to, to calculate the, the mask, uh, we reduced the, the size of the image to 640 by 480. Um, and also the mask that is returned back to the, to the client has the same resolution. Uh, we are using no, currently OpenCV for JPEG com compression and decompression, and uh, after the compression and decompression, we estimate to to require between four for five hundred thousand and almost seven fifty seven hundred fifty thousand bits per frame. As we have a frame rate currently of the thirty hertz, um, we calculate that the uplink and downlink data rate uh, oscillates between fifteen and twenty twenty two millibyte. Milli, uh, megabits per second. Yeah, here I'm going to introduce you some of the timing results that we got. On the top part, you can see which language is running uh, which uh, processing block. So only the model is taking 15 milliseconds, as we already said before. The encoding and decoding is taking between 5 and 10 milliseconds currently. Um, as OpenCV is not the most optimal and optimized uh, library for, for JPEG compression. Uh, the entire send and receive pipeline from the time that is sent uh, uh, from the client and received back in the client is, around, is oscillating around 14 seconds currently. Uh, and finally, the entire pipeline, including the, the, the initial encoding and the final decoding, uh, takes around 15 milliseconds. I can show you here uh, a simple video of the entire pipeline uh, working. Uh, here we can see a colleague that is wearing the, the glasses. Um, and uh, he's able to see his own segmented hands in real time. Using the, the architecture that was that was explained during the, the past slides, um, and you, as you can see here in the in the computer, how the hands are segmented. And uh, finally, I just want to briefly uh, highlight some conclu conclusions. So the first one is that we managed to propose an optimized semantic segmentation model that can fulfill the real-time requirements uh, of human segmentation for mixed reality. Um, next, we also propose a first version of the communication architecture required for, for ecocentric human segmentation of loading and in general for task of loading in, in mixed reality. And finally, we also ex um, expose the first implementation details uh, for these first experiments uh, showing that of course as we said the the proposed machine learning model can fulfill the real-time requirements uh, also that the measured times for the entire pipeline indicate that the proposed model and the communication architecture can already be used in a real device we also pinpoint uh, pinpointed some bottlenecks that we identified during the first experiments 
Uh, and the most important conclusion is that task of loading can become a, a near future uh, reality. Um, and finally, I want to su uh, summarize some uh, future steps that we have in mind, uh, which are mostly focused on optimization. First, we want to, to change the JPEG compression uh, uh, currently done by OpenCV. Uh, we, can, we want to substitute it by a hardware-based JPEG compression to try to reduce uh, the, the, the time consumed by this, by this step. Uh, we also want to try other transport layer protocols uh, to try to reduce the overall transmission latency. Also, we want the, to write the server code in C++, including the, the model inference. Um, and also, we want to test the architecture using a simulated or real 5G platform to try to get a hint of the, the, the network configuration parameters that work better for, for these sort of, of applications. And finally, we will try to use better or ultra low latency cameras as the one that we are using now is, is adding an extra 60 milliseconds of delay on the top of the, of the, of the timings that I, I explained before. Um, and this was all, all from my side. I hope you really enjoy my presentation and feel free to contact me uh, if you have any further questions. Thank you.